Welcome to the road code race analysis of stage six of the Tour of Britain. I'm Dan Martin, and my first observation of the day is that this Tour of Britain will not only go down as one of the flattest in history, it also seems like the best weather. Every edition that I rode seemed to rain nearly every day. But as the riders rolled out of a very sunny South End this morning along the coastal promenade, they obviously didn't have time to enjoy the views as they raced towards Harlow with another projected bunch sprint. After a lengthy neutralized section, the race got underway on really quite narrow roads, something that the sprinters teams looking to control the race would have been really happy about as it makes it easier to let a small group get away. Obviously they would have talked about this in the bus beforehand and free riders immediately got a gap. But this time they seemingly had learned from the previous day's mistakes. As we were around about 100k to go, the group slowed down to the point where they were nearly caught by the peloton. This encouraging further attacks from the group, the breakaway riders hoping for reinforcements to have any chance at all of making it to the finish line, which is really a smart move and at one point it even looked like Jumbo Visma might lose control of the race but they managed to cancel out a lot of the attacks with the help of Ineos Grenadiers before another break formed of five riders but unfortunately this stronger group of fresher riders was weakened by a triple puncture for three of the guys something I've not really seen in a race before but it certainly made the catch easier for the peloton and we headed towards another mass sprint. A law in the peloton encouraged the attack of Dimitri Paiskens, who quickly got a gap, but the group was never really concerned about him reaching the finish, as between 4 and 1 kilometers to go, there was a really fast, wide road, slightly downhill, and the peloton was riding at around 65-67 kilometers an hour. In fact, the key to the result today lies in the profile. It was not only a less technical final, there was also a slight drag to the line, which took away the advantage that the Jumbo Visma leadout train have had in the previous stages. In fact, today, they slightly misjudged the leadout. Tiring Van Aert starts to slow, around about 300 meters to go. Olaf Koy hesitates as it's too far for him to sprint. Then Gudmestad of Unovex senses this and launches first. Even if the gradient is only 2 or 3%, it makes it so much harder to accelerate, especially as Olaf Koy already has his nose in the wind. Then comes Ethan Vernon and Danny Van Poppel. Tucked in the slipstream of Gudmestad, Vernon finds a gap and at this point we all think he wins. But his sprint is undone by the gradient change with around about 75 meters ago where the road flattens. Van Poppel tucked in his slipstream and riding a bigger gear manages to re-accelerate once the gradient flattens and just pip Vernon on the line. His Average occasion some 16 rpm lower than Vernon and you can really see that even Vernon is spun out riding too high a cadence in the final meters it's super impressive of Danny Van Poppel to be able to hold that gear probably about 54 11 by my calculations on that gradient looking at the photo finish the winning margin was only about two centimeters which when you consider that the max speed of Danny Van Poppel was nearly one kilometer an hour faster it shows that this was the first sprint this week that it really paid to come from behind using the slipstream of the other riders to carry more speed towards the finish line and so we look ahead to stage seven, a much hillier route that really does suit the attacking riders. We're not talking alpine passes here, but an up and down start that should see a strong breakaway form. And then two climbs falling in the last 25 kilometers, a second category climb, and then a sneakily uncategorized climb that descends straight to the finish. And if you haven't checked out the Road Code Live Race Center yet, make sure you do, as you can follow the riders live power data. I'll be back tomorrow, looking at the race now it's reached my terrain.